Hello, um, my name's Lily. Welcome to episode five of the Hester and Lark Knitting Podcast. It's been a hot minute uh, after last episode being like, oh, well done me, I've been really consistent. I don't think I've done one of these episodes for like four weeks. Um, so my apologies. Uh, work kicked my butt and because work kicked my butt, I got ill and I just didn't want to film one of these. I felt like not great so i'm feeling better i'm here it does also mean that i have actually knitted quite a lot because i've just been like having downtime reset time um so thank you for sticking with me thank you for being here and uh i'm gonna do what we always do which is um finished objects works in progress i've got quite a lot of acquisitions today so i appreciate that's not for everybody so feel free to skip out and then i'll just have a little chat about anything that i've watched read listened to that I've enjoyed at the end just in case anybody else is looking for some new finds or wants to talk about any of them with me because I'm always up for that. Um, so, finished objects. <gasps> Lily, what are you wearing? I hear you cry and I say, <gasps> look at my finished object. This is a look at my colours crop by Jessie Made Designs. I did the third size I think and that was mostly due to laziness uh, I didn't want to make one that was any bigger than that um, so as you can see this is an all over colour work like cropped t-shirt design if I like try and rise up just a little bit I think you'll be able to see a little bit more of the pattern yep there we go so it's pretty short like if I wear a high-waisted t-shirt it's like only just hits the waistband but again laziness um so I did this entirely out of scraps slash weird things just left in my stash um and I knit this I knit washed blocked and wore it in eight days which is insanity like I never make things this fast like it's ridiculous I mean you'll see there's loads of objects here that I've been working on for months so I got in the zone basically. I cast it on because I wanted a, I was going to visit my friend who lives in Bristol and that is a good three and a half, four hour train journey there and then back and I wanted something to do on the train that was kind of like a bit more than mindless because otherwise I get bored if I'm just just doing that for that long. Um, so I cast it on, I was going on the Friday, I cast it on on the Thursday just being like look just get the short rows done because doing that sort of thing on the train I just wasn't very up for it so I was like just get the short rows done I was like oh just I'll just do the first the first motif no I did like a lot of the yoke just on that day before I'd even got on the train and then I did I had like eight hours worth of train I did a little bit in the evenings when I was hanging out with her when I came back from that holiday I was on um night shifts at work and I usually get like maybe an hour and a half or two hours um, at night where it's um, pretty quiet and I'm trying to stay awake so I have to do something so if I'm not doing something then I will fall asleep sitting there um, and so um, she was born and I love her so um, I've got all the yarns like sitting in a little bag here hang on so the main colour the white background is drops flora in the colour white fog the number of which will be written in the description because I know some some sites just have the numbers um, and I used one full 50 gram ball and whatever I've used from that um, the purple is also drops flora and I think the colour amethyst but again I'll put the number code um, in the description so that's the purple and then this sort of like tweedy ochre colour is some rowan felted tweed that I had from doing a colour work jumper from my grandma a couple of years ago. Um, so I'd used a little bit of the skein and then this is what I have left. So really not much. And then the orange and the green next to it that you can see in this stripe here um, are superwash yarns. I will never do colour work with a superwash yarn ever again, oh my lord. But they are really lovely hand dyed uh, 100% merino superwash uh, from Zakami yarns like four or five years ago. I'm pretty sure the green is called Juno 
and they might still do this colour every now and then. I, I honestly can't remember what this is called and other ball bands are long gone but if anybody knows what their like tonal orange from four years ago was called it, it's that one. Um, and yeah and I had about 50 grams, 45 grams of each of those left and obviously like, I've still got a little bit. I probably could have made it a little bit longer if I wanted but laziness. Um, and yeah and I just feel I'm just so happy with it like I really like the slightly lower contrast um, colour palette I feel like it's very autumnal and living my dreams um, I did uh, follow so these are not the colours used in the pattern um, but I did she in the original one they're like warm colours and then she's got a mint and I put the purple where the mint was because I felt like that would balance the cold and the warm but other than that I just was like oh I've got x grams of x yarn and I've got x grams of x yarn which one uses more meterage um and picked which color I was going to use where based on that because they're very similar tones um and yeah and I had a lovely time I do color work two-handed so I normally knit English um but I will knit my um background English and then my like contrast colour continental because that's the one that like pokes out when you do two-handed knitting con um bare arm knitting um so yeah got me back into that I some of my autumnal um plans is too strong a word leanings uh is to finish the giant colour work uh cardigan that I have got lingering from like three years ago so um it was nice to get back into it I forgot how much I enjoyed it it was also so speedy because it's on four millimeter needles um my gauge is tighter than the pattern as always but I really didn't want to knit I did a little swatch where's my little swatch it's so pretty how have I lost it it was right here guys and oh here we go so I did a little swatch first because I'm a good girl um and looking at it, I, so I think the gauge is 26 stitches to four inches or 24. Basically I was two stitches out. So if it was 24, I had 26. And if it was 26, I had 28. I can't remember. Um, but I looked at the fabric that it made and I think that the recommended yarn is a Brooklyn Tweed one. And I'm fairly sure it's like a, it's a sort of sportish um, or at least a very like plump fingering which is not what I was using and I thought that if I had gone up uh, to a four and a half millimeter let me see if you can see that if I'd gone up to a four and a half millimeter on that swatch it just would have gotten like gappy and holy especially using the superwash which like doesn't have that nice like sticky felty mush the stitches together and you can see the difference between the like superwash sections where the stitches are still quite separate and the sections where I've got the felted tweed, which is beautiful for colour work, by the way, um, and the flora where it is much more melded together um, and the stitches do sit nicer. But like I said, I had a lovely time, used up some scraps that I didn't have any other plans for and really enjoyed it and reminded myself how much I like colour work because it is like mindless, but with a little bit of thinking, you know, and sometimes you need those things in your life. Just trying to think if I just, there's anything else to say. Oh yes, the pattern itself, really nicely written. Um, I think Jessie May designs patterns. I've I've done her free one before and that was really nice. Um, and I think, you know, she's generally very well respected. It's size inclusive. The thing that I thought was lovely is at the end of the pattern, she has um, a blank colour work chart. So she's worked out your gauge for you. She's worked out where to put the increases and there's a blank chart. So if you didn't like these patterns, it's very easy for you to go in and just put a different motif in. Also, there are two lengths. So this is the cropped length and then there is a colour work chart. I think it's from here down from these stripes down where each motif is slightly longer so you do end up with a not quite so cropped. I still don't think it would be like a hip length top by any stretch of the imagination but you would get a longer t-shirt and also there's nothing to stop you if you've got the um, yardage available just putting another motif on the bottom. Um, I did have to quite aggressively block, I don't think you can see, I think it's below the camera, I did have to quite aggressively block the ribbing at the bottom um, in order for it not to flip up and it is kind of sort of lying flat 
um, but I might give it a good steam. Um, just, you know, nothing like a little bit of extra violence and force to make your point. Um, so yes, very happy with that. Very pleased. Also feeling very accomplished. Will never happen again. The second finished object, oh my god, this never happens, it's because I have not filmed a video for a month, um, is my Storm Sweater Junior, which is still very slightly damp, so it needs to go back on my hot era before I give it as a gift later, is my Storm Sweater Junior, and that is why the ends aren't trimmed yet, it's because it just needs to dry all the way and then I'll snip them, they are all woven in. Um, Yes, and I did this in the smallest size currently available, which is a one to two. It looks massive, but it is the dimensions specified. And actually, when you look at the pictures on the pattern uh, of a small human wearing this size, he has got his cuffs rolled up and it does come halfway down his thighs. So that's the Storm Sweater Junior by Petite Knit. I did the smallest size. Um, and I used Sir, no, not Sir Dar, I used Stylecraft Recreate, which is a wool acrylic polyester blend, all made up from recycled materials. So the wool and the acrylic are from uh, pre existing uh, fabrics, and then the polyester is from recycled plastic bottles. So you know, I it makes me feel a little bit better, and it is machine washable and tumble, tumble dryerable. Don't think that's a word but small people are no notoriously not very clean so uh that's what that is i am very pleased with it i think it looks beautiful i'm planning on making one for myself so i clearly enjoyed the pattern um i think i do think it's massive but we followed the pattern what else can we do the only thing I would say is that considering it's petite knit and she's got like a giant team of humans helping her the um, sleeve chart um, doesn't have the decreases in, it's just uh, do this with some decreases and actually the way they line up, if you do it as it's written, is a bit ugly and actually for the money that everybody spends with her and the team of people that she has, they probably could have put some sleeve charts including decreases in the pattern. Um, the bit that I'm thinking about is on the sleeves you've got this um, broken double rib section and you can see you've got some nice sleeve decreases and the way it lines up you end up if you just follow the pattern and I was because I just wasn't thinking you end up with this weird like can you see here this bit where there's some rib that then disappears into some decreases because you only do like two rows of it and actually it just looks a bit ugly and if they just put a decrease chart in there with purl stitches for the whole of that gap it would look much nicer and I wouldn't have had to use my brain um, I could have just followed the instructions. I appreciate that lots of Scandi patterns are a lot more like free and breezy about these sorts of things, but um, I think for the level of pattern designer that she is, it would be nice to have a sleeve chart in there for different sizes, especially as I think sizes, like there's only really two different sleeve sizes, I think, basically, in terms of um, like, decrease rate and things like that um what else to say about that oh the only thing that I did which was my mum's suggestion so I'm not going to take too much credit is using my my threads I made a little loop in the back neck so that it can be hung up when small human goes to nursery if they ever wear it to nursery um and then it's getting gifted today so I really hope it dries um and I'll just give it with like a little I do those little brown tags like they always make me think of Paddington so please take care of this bear thank you but it's please take care of this jumper thank you so that has um fiber composition washing instructions and then I usually put a little note on the other side of like what the what the pattern is and why it was gifted so this one says a storm sweater for mm, on their first birthday um lots of love from Lily and then yeah wash some washing instructions on the back I'll obviously give her a card and things as well but I just think that's cute right um and I'll just fold it and put a little ribbon around it in the folded thing I was gonna show you how I like wrap and knit gift wrap and knit you know how I knit wrap and like present gifts but it's not dry so here we are um so yeah I again I'm really pleased I'm gonna make one for me more info on that coming soon um and yeah 
I think, so I used one and a half skeins, so this is the second ball, um, so I probably have enough to maybe squeeze a hat out of that for her for Christmas, um, if not I'll get something and do like a stripy hat with this because cute, who doesn't like to match? Um, so yeah, that's my Storm Sweater Junior finished object. And my other finished object is also something you've never seen. Um, and it's another thing that I lost my tiny mind on. So this is an Ingrid top by Gregoria Fibres. Um, I used Serdar Cotton 4 Ply in the colour 502, very inventive. Um, again, this is Deep Stash. Um, I actually had a cardigan that I'd sort of like seven, not even 70%, that's too generous. I was maybe 50% finished, a crochet cardigan, 50% finished for my mum, which wasn't ever going to fit her and she wasn't ever going to wear and had been sitting there for like four to five years. So that got frogged <laughs> finally and um, all the yarn was just sitting there and I thought, no, oh, I'm going to do it. I want it. I'm going to do it. So um, I've not wove my ends in and I've not washed and blocked it because the finishings made me angry and I just needed to put it in time out for a minute. Also the like little blip of hot weather that we had that inspired me to finish it ended and it's horrible here again. It's definitely autumn so I'm not sure when I'm really going to get to wear it but I had fun making it and I didn't pay for the yarn so this I did the fourth size I would say it looks like when you look at this pattern you think oh it's got like eight sizes nine sizes the smallest sizes are really small so it doesn't it's size inclusive in a downwards fashion but not in an upwards fashion um and I just followed the pattern I think it's got some really nice finishing details like it's got um I'll just hold it up so you can actually see it first please excuse all of the things so go there it is so it's got a folded hem at the bottom and around the neck that's folded hem around the neck is what made me angry not because of the pattern but because I was stupid and then it's just got like a little picked up and rolled hem on the sleeves um again I just followed the pattern I think I got gauge almost exactly with um, one needle size up so that was pleasing and um I do think that the pattern pictures are from a different sample because when you do the maths on how many rows there are before you join for the body the armholes are very deep and in the picture they're not in the picture they come like right into her armpit and there is no way that based on this pattern the way it is currently written that that picture matches this construction unless she has like a really really long torso or like a really long shoulder which she doesn't because the model in the picture is very slim so i and there are a few comments on ravelry about that being like the armhole's really deep did i do it wrong i'm like no if you do the maths if you work it out like this is how many rows they suggest you do before you join in the body and then you work out on the gauge like the armholes are just really deep which is fine by me i don't mind i don't really care if like i don't really wear proper bras anymore life's too short guys for underwired bras um so I don't really mind if like a little bit of crop top pokes out the side and like you need it anyway because there's eyelets all over it like don't want anything poking out that's not supposed to oh cat hair always sorry um so yeah so I need to wash and block it because all of these eyelets will open up and the whole thing will hopefully relax a little bit it's so heavy um and I did have a vision of me in like blue denim shorts and like teethers with a big hat feeling really cool like I'm on holiday in, in Greece uh the reality is I will never go to Greece in the summer because I will fry but the vision is there so at some point this will get wash blocked and tried on I worked out the length based on a top that I already own that's a very similar shape actually on the top and armhole depth so I'm pretty confident that I'll like the shape and where it fits, sits on me. I just need to um, actually do those things. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I wanted to say about this pattern. No, I don't think so. I enjoyed the Serdar four ply. I think I talked, I think I used some of it in my Tolster tea, which I talked about in my very first episode. 
um, and the same thing stand. It's a really warm feeling cotton. It's not got that like crispy dryness. I think it's mercerized, so it's a little bit shiny, but it's not like super shiny. It's got a nice weight and drape. I held it double. Obviously, this is a DK weight pattern. Um, not obviously, I didn't tell you that. I held it double. Um, and yeah, I think so. I think I just basically stuffed up when I picked up for the neck. And instead of ripping it out and fixing it, I just fudged it. So um, that's why it made me angry, not because of the pattern. <laughs> the pattern was fine. I just got cross. Um, so yeah, that's sort of, I'm going to put it in a finished object pile because I'm not going to come back and talk about it when I've washed it and blocked it. I'm just going to let sleeping dogs lie and um, finish it. You might see a finished picture on Instagram if you really care that much, but um, I'm going to finish talking about it on the podcast for now. I'm just trying to think, I've got a little notes. I'm just trying to think if there's anything else I wanted to say about it. I don't think so. Um, if I think of something burning, maybe I will mention it again, but I think that was everything. Um, yes, I still want to make the blouse number two from My Favourite Things Knitwear, which is very similar in style in that it's like eyelet rows and some garter ridges. Um, but I need to give myself a little break from eyelets, even though that they're made differently. That Oh, that is what I was going to say. This is a knit two together eyelet. Oh, horrid. Horrible. I hated it by the end. Um, but again, it looks really nice. It's a one way of achieving something and it does look lovely, but oh. I didn't enjoy them by the end, especially on cotton because there's just no give. So you're there just like trying to wedge your needle in these two. No, I didn't like it. I didn't like it. Um, so those are all my finished objects. I mean, for me, that's actually mad and uh, well done. Well done me. Um, so I'm going to move on to my works in progress. Um, there's nothing really very exciting and new in here. It's all things you've seen before, I think. Um, I've got a little bit further on my wave sweater. This is from line and issue number 17. And I'm using Woolly Knit British Wool 4-ply in the colour Summer Storm Held Double to get a DK. And that's the bluey, turquoisey, lovely colour. And then the ridges are Serdar Country Classic DK, which is a wool acrylic blend. Um, so front and back panels are finished and I just need to join in the round. Uh, this and my storm sweater were using the same size needles and I only have one and I made a rule for myself that I was not allowed to keep going on this until I'd finished the storm sweater because I needed to give it as a present today. Um, so that's why I've stopped because I literally had to go and put it in another room because all I wanted to do was this and it was stopping me and I knew if I like was in the middle of a lace round on the body I wasn't going to want to put like a uh, stitch saver yarn through all of those stitches just so that I could use the four millimeter needles um so I I, I in an act of self-preservation I paused here so I just need to join the front and the back I think once I do I will find doing the lace a little bit easier because I will be able to read the chart I really struggle reading charts backwards so you know your pearl symbol is suddenly and it's a million oh no, I can do it, like I can, but it requires a level of mental engagement that uh, is not enjoyable for me. Um, whereas just reading a chart, um, like right side is fine. I, I quite like a right sided chart, but I don't enjoy doing them backwards and forwards. Um, there are quite a few mistakes in this lace um, and I'm hoping that you can't see them when it's all blocked out because some of them I thinked back to fix and some of them I went no I'm gonna deal with that just by fudging um so there's some fudges here and there um nothing too obvious I don't think but we'll see <laughs> um I I got to a point with it where I did like three rows in a row and I made a mistake in a different point on every row and so the next row for four rows I had to fix the mistake that I had just made and I honestly nearly screamed because they were so such stupid errors as well um and it took me ages to find them I think that's the thing with laces you can't just be like oh look I dropped a stitch or oh I slipped that stitch instead of knit it or oh I knit instead of purled you're like did I do that yarn over did I mm, uh. it just takes longer doesn't it 
still fun, still engaging. The only thing that I need to decide at some point, nothing soon, is in the original pattern, like in the magazine, the neckband is in the main colour and so are the wrist cuffs. But it does give you the suggestion that like, oh, you could use your contrast colour for the neck. And I'm thinking that might be quite a nice idea because this woolly knit, lovely colour, very affordable, would be lovely for colour work, um, but not the softest thing in the world. Whereas the country classic, as it is a, a acrylic blend with, and it's been superwash treated, is fairly soft. It's not like, oh, buttery, put, put my tiny newborn baby rabbit in it, you know, I don't know what I'm talking about, but it's much softer than the uh, the main colour. So I might do the neckband in the white. I'm not sure. I'm going to see how the body looks. And then I think if I do the neck, if I've got enough yarn, I'll do the sleeve cuffs as well, because again, they're quite tight. They're quite um, balloony sleeves are really nice. The lace pattern goes down the sleeve and then it is, goes in quite cinches quite tightly around the wrist but that does mean that 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 will would be right there right on the wrist um and that might also be a little bit scratchy so um that's the kind of long term that's the decision that i need to make for this short term i just need to get back on with it because my four and a half millimeter millimeter needles have been freed from the uh, storm sweater junior so i'm allowed to carry on with this um i think that's everything i wanted to say about that um if you want a little bit more information you can always uh flip back a couple of episodes where i've talked about it um then still chugging along very slowly i'm so sorry guys is uh my cumulus tee i've which is another petite knit pattern i'm knitting the third size this is knitting for olive pure silk in the color olive um i very nearly finished the first sleeve I've done all of the like mandated uh, decreases, but I want it to, I tried it on and I want it to just be like a touch longer. So I'm going to do another set of decreases. Also, there's quite, still quite a lot of space in this sleeve for my upper arm. So I think I'm going to do one more decrease and then we're back to the existential angst that I had over the bottom hem. Oh, it's rolling. I don't think it will when it's uh, locked. Please, Lord. Um, fingers crossed um of whether to do what needle size to use and what decreases to do because i think the sleeves i also recommend in the i cord uh that you decrease every x number of stitches and i don't want it to be tight because it's tight i want it to be like fitted but i don't want it to be tight because then I won't want to wear it and I really don't want to unpick an eye cord bind off. It's just misery um, if it's too tight. So I need to have another little think about that. I think if I do one more decrease and try it back on, see how it's sitting and then maybe just do like a tight eye cord bind off, I think will be enough. And actually this sleeve has really not taken me very long at all. I just need to pull my finger out and get it finished because I'm very like I know it's technically like a summer knit oh t-shirts blah 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 but this is a very happy autumn wear for me like the colour is very autumnal I also think that this silk's going to be really warm um so it's a very warm t-shirt which again is nice for autumn I just want to wear it because I really like the fibre and I really like the colour so um I've put it by my bed so it can be bedtime knitting and hopefully that will you know, like just a few rows a day. I mean, I managed 24 rounds in like 45 minutes last night. So I really just need to get on with it. Like it's not going to take me very long because then once I've done the sleeves, all I need to do is the eye cord round the neck and then it's finished and I can wear it. And that's really what I want. I mean, it's a lovely process knit. Actually, the yarn is so nice. So that's fine. But I also really want to wear it, so I just need to get on with it. I tried it on again last night and was like, no, I really like it. I just want to wear it. Sort your life out, Lily. Get on with it. Um, so yeah, that's my cumulus tea. And then the only other thing that I've obviously cast on and just done some is a sock. Um, oh, but Lily, you showed us a sock in a different episode, didn't you? And I, I say yes, and then I say I've done, not really done anything on that sock. Um, but this is just a plain old vanilla sock. I've started 
my I'm gonna do a short row heel I'm in the middle of it somewhere there it is um this is Stylecraft sock yarn what's it called let me find my little thing uh Stylecraft head over heels and this is the color 3116 stride um, I've actually made some socks in this yarn before in a different colourway, in a very autumnal, like, orangey, browny, greeny colourway, and I enjoyed it. Um, these are just, like, totally plain vanilla socks. I've done a slightly longer cuff than normal, not cuff, um, leg, an extra 20 rounds on the leg than normal, um, so that I can wear them with boots. And um, this is going to be, like, bus and... Uh, night shift knitting for the next little bit because I, like I said I when there's a little bit of downtime I just need something to keep me awake because otherwise I will fall asleep sitting where I am sat or walking where I'm walking so um that's what that's for if it's too busy which it often is this time of year um then I just won't get it out but it's nice to have it there and also to keep me awake on the bus journey home because I'm terrified of falling asleep and missing my bus stop and ending up like somewhere in the depths of East Sussex, um, nowhere near my home and having to get a bus back again and then go to bed, which just sounds like just so sad. Um, so those are kind of like my active-ish whips. Um, like I, I kind of lost my mind this month a little bit. I was, I work had like totally stressed me out. And I think sometimes when you feel like that, I don't know about you, but me, I'm like, I get castellanitis. I just want to make new things. I just want that nice, happy dopamine rush of the new, shiny. Um, and uh, sometimes things that I've been working on get put in, put, put to one side for new stuff. But actually I've finished the new things. So at least I've not added to my lingering whip pile. Um, so that's kind of like what I've been working on. Um, I'm going to talk about acquisitions next and it is I have bought quite a lot I went to um so if that's sorry I bought quite a bit if that's not your jam if that's not your vibe that's fine also sometimes if I'm feeling really spendy and I watch someone talk about spending things I then go and spend stuff and that's good for me so totally appreciate if this is not your vibe farewell it's been lovely to have you um but if you like people talking about yarn that they've bought then hang out because there's gone there's gonna be some yarn um so as i mentioned i went to bristol to see my friend and part of going to see my friend was there is a yarn shop in bristol called no frills knitting i've ordered from them online before and it was a lovely process and they have lots of brands of yarn in their store which i can't get down here i could obviously buy them online but it's nice to go and feel and touch and see the colors in real life and also uh the friend that i was staying with our mutual friends lots of them are having babies oh some of the baby knitting that i'm going to be doing this autumn and winter and so i just wanted like a second opinion on colors and um what patterns i picked and things like that um because she also knows them really well and it was a nice thing that we got to go and do together like we had a lovely day out in bristol and this was just a little part of it so i did buy quite a bit of stuff um a heads up I also bought a couple of like little notions and things so I'll talk about those as well so um it all comes in a tote bag best things come in tote bags doop, doop, doop. so pretty what a nice shade of green so predictable so the first thing notions wise that I got is I bought some of the knit pro mindful collection so i bought a set of the tips so that's a three millimeter because i thought actually they were really ooh, crumbs that's noisy isn't it they were really nice and pointy and um i thought i would try them out because uh my chat reviews are really expensive to buy additional things for so i'm always looking for other things to try and also i bought some more of the mindful cables again i think i spoke about these in an episode was it the very first one where I said I bought one to try and I really liked it and they had the long cables so I bought a 60 80 and 100 centimeter cable I also really like that they all come with stoppers because that's the problem with my child grues is the stoppers you get when you buy the set of needles the child grew ones you only get one set of stoppers and when you buy a cable it doesn't come with stoppers so I think I have one set of stoppers for all of my Chowgoo cables which just isn't working out for me with how much I like to chop and change you can buy them separately but it's like six or seven pounds just for some stoppers which is just madness so these come with a stopper um then and 
and a pin and I'm very pleased with them. I did a little swatch with these needles. They are a pleasant level of pointy, not so much that if you use your fingers to sort of like slide things, sometimes they're going to break your skin. But um, I'm trying to see if you can see those. I don't think you can. Um, but not so much, there you go, that, but not blunt, not so blunt that you can't like really feel like you're actually getting in there. So that's those. And then the other thing that I bought, which is oh, on the, in another room, is they have a little, it's really cute, um, like rescue crochet hook um, keychain. So you have like a, a little ring and it's got three crochet, like little crochet hooks on that are about this long. So I, I think a four, five and six millimetre. So you can like, if you've dropped a stitch, you can hook it back up. I thought it was cute. It was like £2.50, couldn't resist. So that's the notiony things that I bought. Thought I'd get those out of the way first. And then in terms of yarn, I bought, there's two, I bought yarn for two different babies. Let me just organise what's in here. Sorry. Two different babies and then some for me, obviously. So the first baby um, is in theory going to be a girl, which is very exciting. And so both babies are going to get a pair of like leggingsy trousers and then some kind of top half um and so this little human got these two colors in sun there's gone sunday um these are both petite knit colors actually which is unintentional um but the sort of this softer color i know they have names but they're not on the bands is 3553 and then this much like more true terracotta color is 3536 this is for the bottom half um, and this is for the top half. So the bottom half I found, I'm going to link them because I've forgotten the name. I found a pair of, a free pattern for a pair of um, like bloomery trousers on Ravelry. I think it's a, um, is it a Phil Kalana pattern? Like a free Phil Kalana pattern. It comes in English and basically it's got like a faux cable ribbed waistband, like big voluminous legs and then faux cable rib um legs really cute free it's got a little gusset as well so it won't like wedge up the baby's nappy um so that's for those and then on the top half um i'm either going to do an olives wrap from knitting for olive um but i've read some of the comments about how it's bottom up which i just why why do we make things bottom up but i've read some of the comments about how the um like adding the arms is really really fiddly and actually i was looking at how it's like trying to work out how it's constructed. I'm like, how on earth do you do that? Like, I don't get it. I don't understand how you add them on. So, cause they, you don't put any stitches on hold. So you you're knit, you knit across the body, straight across the sleeve and back round twice. And I don't really ha know how you do it with Magic Loop because it's a fold over cardigan. So it's not even like there's a front and a back. There's like a front and a back and a front. Anyway, so if anyone's made olives wrap from knitting for olive and has any uh top tips about the construction and whether it's uh an absolute horror to knit or not let me know the other two options are again i'll link it because i've forgotten there's like a really pretty um cardigan oh, what's the what's the name of it on ravelry i can't remember i should have written this down it, i'll link all of them in the description so you can see but it's got really cute little like eyelet lace um increase seams in a sort of like I, there's more it's not just four it's not just raglan increases there's some additional ones and then just like a little single button at the top um built-in button band um looks really cute really classic or there is um Ellen's set from Petite Knit which is a all over eyelet cardigan and there's a little like bloomer like little shorts bloomer pattern in there as well which I wouldn't really use I don't think but could be cute to have um but also I feel like this is just turning into a Petite Knit stan account isn't it so um I might try the um the one with the eyelet details if everybody's feedback on the olive wrap is oh my god this is horrible because it just it, when something's not fun to knit especially on like little yarn i just like i don't want to do it like i want it to be fun i want to enjoy doing it as well and also if you're making something for like a little precious human i feel like you should be putting good vibes into the making you know like it should be good good vibes i don't know so that's for that's for little little 
female human. Um, she's also probably going to be quite small. Um, she's measuring she's measuring fine but on the smaller side both parents aren't very big and there's also a sort of distinct chance that she could come quite early so I'm definitely going to be making probably the smallest size which I think is like a two month size in both of those um and I also might tighten up my gauge to get like a actual small size because I think she's probably going to be smaller than you like a, your average newborn when she's born she might prove us all wrong and be a giant but I don't think she's going to be um so those of her, I'm very pleased with that colour combination. I think it's really pretty and kind of like girly, but not like, oh my God, pink and frills. Not there's anything wrong with pink and frills, but her parents really aren't pink and frills kind of people. Um, <coughs> I beg your pardon, I'm so sorry. The other baby is of an undetermined gender um, and will not be being found out until Small Human is here. And this baby is probably going to be a very big baby because both their parents are very tall and they're also measuring really large. So this baby's going to get a bigger size. Um, so I picked, that's um, Sunday is a four ply, so I picked a DK. And also these parents absolutely will not put anything on a hand wash setting on a washing machine. Like, I just know that. These parents absolutely will put these through on a hand wash setting on a washing machine, so I thought it was fine to use this. So they got some Merinol from Sanmez Garn, which is a DK um, superwash merino, and I got this lovely orangey colour, which again is number 2537. That's that one. And then to go with that, I like a, a sort of deep turquoisey, sagey colour really beautiful nice combo right Don't do that. so i'm really pleased with that the bluey green is color 7572 and so they are also getting a pair of um like similar style trousers so ribbed top big old baggy legs and rib bottoms but instead of doing the like faux cable -y lace top um it's just going to be ribbed um because I feel like that's more their vibe anyway and also I mean boys can wear lace but you know and then again an indetermined top I might do um I don't know if anyone's got any suggestions of something in a DK weight jumper jumper slash cardigan wise I think cardigan is easier right because then you don't have to pull it over their heads um quite I uh, when I asked this before loads of people suggested an anchors um cardigan from petite knit and they are quite nice it's quite a nice range um and then there i mean there's loads out there aren't there but again kind of like gender neutral so nothing like oh my god really frilly but also i don't really want to do them like a grandpa cardigan nothing not that there's anything wrong with grandpa cardigan little babies in grandpa clothes is gorgeous um because they do all just look like old men don't they but not sure. And then the other thing, sort of for babies, sort of for me, it's a combo deal that I bought was some very nice sock yarn. So this is the Regia Premium Silk and this is the colour unknown. Is it going to tell me? Oh, it's just like a plain colour, isn't it? It's so soft. And so the thing that I made for baby that got the storm sweater got a pair of socks when she was born and her mums are honestly just like, these socks are incredible. They're the only socks that stay up. They're so soft. They, she's only just like totally grown out of them because they've stretched and stretched and stretched them over her little feet. So all the babies are going to get a pair of little socks. And I think I'll link the pattern. It's like, it's called like ultimate baby sock or something ridiculous like that I'll link it because it is fantastic and it's free and there's also a DK weight version if you don't want to do fingering weight socks which is fine <coughs> excuse me um so basically I bought this so that every baby from now on any baby all babies get a pair of socks out of this because it's machine washable it's so soft um and it's totally neutral so it will go with anything and all babies deserve nice socks um so that's and then you never know at some point a little pair of shorty socks might make their way onto my feet because it only takes me about 40 gram 40 to 50 grams to make a pair of shorty socks for both my feet so still a lot of sock left for babies um yeah and then i bought myself some yarn as well 
I also bought myself some Sunday, um, again from the Petite Knit um, colour selection. I just think they're really nice, like slightly, slightly different neutral. So it's this really like nice warm tone, like it's got like an ochre undertone brown. Oopsies, this way up. And that is colour 2564. Um, and this is going to be at some point an Ellie shirt by Rust Knitwear, Simone, I think her name is, um, which I did a little swatch for using my new needles because I wanted to try the new needles. I wanted to try the yarn and it's all in like two by two broken rib. So that's my little swatch. And actually I got gauge first time on the right size needles, which is unheard of. Um, so I really enjoyed working with that and it's very soft, but it's not like, it's not that like silky, oh, I'm going to pill everywhere soft. It's just really soft, like not scratchy in the slightest. Could 100% wear this like everywhere on, on my body and be very happy, which is good because the Ellie shirt is quite fitted. Um, and I want to do it with sort of like three quarter length sleeves, not all the way down. I think I'd be too hot, um, but sort of down to just above the elbow length sleeves again I'll link the pattern but it's some really nice two by two broken rib all over with some really nice like traveling decorative um increases and decreases around the bust um I think it's graded for like a full like a proper full size range um and the uh like size descriptions on the Ravelry page are really in depth so like it's got the arm side depth and like bust and waist and everything so um you could make a very informed decision about whether it will fit your body the only thing is that she hasn't put a yardage requirement on the Ravelry page but she has got a vest version so I just bought like an extra skein than the vest version and hope that will be enough for like three quarter length sleeves um and then um, I also, when I was in the shop, had a look at all the Peer Gint from Sanders Garn because I want to make a storm sweater for me. And the recommended yarn is Peer Gint. And I just, I want it. I just want it. And your gal, your gal saves so that she can have these things. And your gal doesn't do other things so that she can have these things. So I was looking at the colours of the Peer Gint that they had in stock and they basically... Piergin's really heavy, um, so it's a DK weight, but you only get 90 meters, I think, in a ball. So it's like very dense. So you need a lot of skeins to make a jumper. And so um, in the shop, they were saying, or oh, like basically anytime anybody buys a jumper's quantity of a color, like it wipes us out. Like we don't, we can't stock enough um, to like have two jumpers worth basically which makes sense because it's a really cute dinky little shop and I can't see where they would put more than what they currently have like everything is jam-packed so I had a look at all the colors and I knew that I really wanted to do it in a in a navy blue um to go for that like full because obviously it's this all over texture right really nice um and I know that in a dark color it won't show up as well but I really wanted that like fisherman's gansey um vibe but without knitting a Gansey on like two and a half millimeter needles, which I think would kill me. Um, so I knew I wanted it in a dark navy and I looked at the like navy that was already existing in the pig in color range. And I also looked at the navy blue that's in the new petite knit um, color card. And actually, and my friend agreed with me, we both preferred the petite knit one. It's just that little bit darker. It's almost like got a black undertone. It's really, really, really dark. Um, and it's, uh, it's really lovely. And so I have ordered from them now that it's back in stock, 15 skeins of that, and that is on its way. And I also ordered at the same time, the um, four and a half millimeter version of these needles, because my experience with the, um, Storm Sweater Junior is that I had to go up half a needle size and I mean that's pretty true of me in almost every pattern to be honest is like I've got to I've got to up my needle size to get a gauge so I ordered a four and a half millimeter needle in the in the like strong expectation that that is what I would need <laughs> in order to make the jumper so it will be on like a separate set of four and a half millimeter needles to this bad boy so I can do both at once if I want um and you know I want so that's that's everything that I bought um so much it's ridiculous but it has all got plans and it has all got de homes and destinations and I should bash through at the very least all the baby stuff by uh December because 
that's when humans are going to be arriving so we need to have this stuff ready um especially as i especially as for the for the female human uh, i'm going to be knitting a smaller size so it needs to be done and ready for when she's here so that they can actually put it on her and that's all I ask really is when I make something for a small human is that they wear it once and I see a photo and then I don't care if they never wear it again. <laughs> I just want a picture. So if you have small humans and people make you things, just, just take a picture and send it to the person that made it. It'll make them so happy and then they literally never need to wear it ever again. Like I truly don't care if they don't wear these things. I just want them to wear it once and have a picture. <laughs> is that really bad? I think it might be really bad. Anyway. So that's my acquisitions. I feel like I smashed through that. I feel like I've spoken so fast, I'm definitely rusty. Um, I just want to mention a couple of things that I've watched. I finally watched um, Red, White and Royal Blue on Amazon Prime, which is an adaptation of a, a LGBT romance novel. He's the son of the US president. He's a Prince of England. So cute. Oh my god, it was so cute. I loved it. I mean, I love romance novels anyway. Like, you always know that everything's going to be okay in the end, and that's what you need, right, sometimes in life. But it was so lovely, and it's so nice to see these kind of these stories on mainstream platforms and everybody just, like, loving life. It's for everybody. You don't have to be queer to enjoy people loving each other. It's so cute. It's so cute. And all of the... um like all of the peril in their relationship feels really justified and really earned. Like nobody feels like they're just being stupid and not listening to anybody because I hate that. Um, so I watched that and I would 100% recommend that. It's really lovely. And then what else have I watched that I feel like was really good? Oh, my brain has turned to mush. Oh, and I was gonna say last episode, I was like, oh, you know, I just put a bit of like Throne of Glass on in the background because I've listened to it all before and it was good. Oh my God, it sucked me back in. And I re-listened to the whole of the last book, which is like 30 hours. Um, and it's so good. Like it's such peak epic fantasy with like the, with a female gaze. Like that's the best thing about it really is that it's those epic sword fighting, like magic novels, but it's written by a woman for women or by a woman for teenage girls and women <laughs> like it's so good and I think that's why I love it so much is that it is it is a female gaze on that um that genre and that um yeah anyway so the Sarah J Maas Throne of, Gla Throne of Glass series I usually skip the first couple now because there's so many of them they're so long and I love the ending so I I um, re-listened to all of that and got like full goosebumps and tears on the train while I was listening to it. I was having a great time. Um, so yeah, I think that is everything. So thank you so much for um, waiting for me to come back because it's been a while. I'm going to try and be a little bit more frequent. I think every four weeks is uh, not often enough, but sometimes I just don't have that much to talk about. But clearly this time is not one of those times um and thank you so much for joining me and like i said i will try and be a little bit more punctual next time so yeah until i see you again thanks for watching bye bye